Um, and, you know, we can always turn off recording during like the sharing time, maybe um, if that's, you know, if that makes people more comfortable, I, I want everyone to feel safe here. So, um, so yeah, um, let's see. I'm going to call on um, Frida first, if that's okay. So yeah, your name, um, gender pronouns, if you feel comfortable and what brought you here. Yeah. Can y'all hear me okay? I'm wearing Bluetooth headphones. Awesome. Um, and I'm looking at the screen here, but the camera's here. So uh, my name is Frida. Um, I, my pronouns are she, they. Um, I work at the Austin Public Library and I'm actually at work right now. Um, but I'm, I'm really interested in zines. I make my own zines, but I am also trying to start a zine kind of like repertoire workshop with teens and a, a zine collection for teens. Um, so I'm really excited to learn from you, but also would love to network and collaborate in the future. So that's me. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here, Frida. I'd love to, yeah, follow up definitely about zine making and, um, and if you're, so you said you, you work at the Austin Public Library? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you've been to the downtown branch, you know, you've, you've explored the zine library there, right? And, and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I work at the downtown and we currently have that adult zine collection and we have a tween zine collection, but um, I'm in charge of getting started with the teen zine collection, so. That's awesome, I love that. That's a really cool thing to know and I might I might follow up with you because we have a, I think Teresa's gonna come back online here in just a second, but um, we have a uh, program coming up that I feel like I want to share that with my students about. So cool. Okay. Definitely. Awesome. Do you want to pass it to someone? Sure. Um, Emily Williams. Hey, Emily. If, if you want to, you can also share in the chat as well. You don't have to voice out loud. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. We're excited for you to be here. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess I, I can pass it to uh, Nicole. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nicole. I use they uh, pronouns. Um, and I'm here because I've always wanted to get involved in the Red Simon community. Um, I have worked with young people with more on the side of theater and um, a little bit of audio and podcasting and always been a big zine fan, but um, saw a lot of overlap there and was like, both for my, my own like self-care and for like sharing it with young people. I was hoping to come join this community and learn from everybody. And I'll pass uh, to Cece. Hey folks, uh, good afternoon. Uh, she, her, uh, former Austinite, now relocated to the Northeast. Um, I'm here to support um, Red Salmon Arts and Leticia in particular, and just happy to be here. Happy to have you here. And I'll, I'll pass it over to Anna. Hello everyone, my name is Ana Garcia. I'm originally from Colombia. I'm living in Austin, Texas because my family lives here, like my, my partner lives here. Uh, I've tried to connect with uh, Red Salmon Arts, but then it just like the pandemic happened. So I'm here to connect with the community and I, I am an art therapist. So I love everything that's art related and just community related. And I'm happy to be here with all of you. Thank you for being here, Anna. Do you want to pass it to someone? Yes, I want to pass it to Abril. Hi, all. I'm Abril. I go. I use she/her/hers. Um, I 
I'm here because I'm fairly new to Austin and I saw a posting for this at the Austin Public Library. So I really wanted to connect with the community and um, learn more about zines. Okay, how about uh, KO? Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Oh, yes, we definitely got to I love I love learning about zines because um, zine making is a wonderful activity that you can literally do with anyone from like a two year old all the way to like a 99 year old and 100. I don't know. However old someone is um, like it, they it's a it's a very versatile art form. So, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for being here. I think that's everything, buddy. I, I hope Teresa is able to join us again, but, um, and I, I apologize for the, um, oh, okay, here's Monica. Um, I apologize for the um, live transcript. I think it's great that we have it, but it's not always the most accurate. Like, I think it's probably going to make zine into a lot of different uh, <laughs> words. So, um, but I am also, I also have a Google slide, so I'll, um, continue to share that with y'all, but yeah. Um, welcome, Monica. Um, let me see if they would like to. No, okay. Well, connectivity. Um, well, if, hopefully they can join us again, and then um, we can also introduce ourselves again when we share later. Um, so yeah, I'm going to um, share my screen here in just a second, but um, I figured I would just give you a, a really, really quick like intro to how I got into zine making. Um, I was in my um, second year, I think, uh, of my Master of Fine Arts program at Texas State and just having a really, really hard time for various reasons, but um, one of them being that I was still teaching um, yeah, um, I was teaching full time um, in elementary school and commuting to San Marcos from Round Rock every you know few days and doing night classes and it was just generally really stressed and burnt out, both physically and mentally. And it was also during a time in which I was um, like going through the search for a diagnosis for a chronic illness. So um, that is kind of like it was a culmination of a time in which my body and my heart and spirit were very, very uh, downtrodden, I guess. Um, and I made friends with some folks in my program who, um, you know, first of all, I, I got involved with Red, Red Salmon Arts that year, actually, um, and met Lilia that year, which so it was a really beautiful year in that respect. Um, but I also made friends with um, folks in Austin and San Antonio who were zinesters um, and kind of learned a little bit about zine making and some of them were using zines as a way to, um, you know, both be kind of a therapeutic activity because it is often a hands-on activity um, but they were also using it to um, publish their poetry, to share artwork with the community. And so they would have like, um, there are lots of different pop-up markets, both in San Antonio and Austin, um, where people can kind of sell their, their um, handmade things. And so like that was another place at events like that where I saw um, other Latinx uh, creators who were, um, you know, putting their work out there and, and that was, something that I, I really didn't know a whole lot about. Um, and so I started to kind of learn a little bit more about how zines, which are short for magazines, have this long history of um, being both a radical space for people to um, get messages out there and share um, their work with others, but also a space um, for people to kind of forego the traditional publishing route and kind of share their artwork in a way that was both cost effective and meaningful. Um, you know, um, one of the examples I always like to have is um, a friend of mine, Marilise, who's a zine creator. Um, they often talk about how, you know, they have this one zine that has this beautiful artwork in it that they shared um, 
that you know if you were to go to a gallery somewhere it would be like upwards of 200 maybe 400 dollars right but this person was selling the zine for five dollars right so now suddenly you have access to this person's work and you're supporting this artist while also doing it in a way that you know um, is sustainable and so that's one of the reasons why um, zine making has always appealed to me and then as I started working it into my teaching practices with youth and with um, younger students um, that's kind of how it became a model for me to um, both share my work um, and also to um, help other students and other folks um, create and share their work as well. So I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to make this um, PowerPoint available um, with the recording um, later. So um, if you miss anything, don't don't be discouraged. And it is in English and Spanish just because I like to make it as accessible as possible to anybody who might need it. Um, so zine making a self care. Um, we already did our icebreaker. Um, like I said, to any folks who are just joining us, um, you will need a sheet of paper, a pen or pencil, and some scissors. Um, and later you may want to grab um, magazines, um, glue, um, colored pencils or markers or paint even, but that's something I would say you can always add to later. And if you're looking for magazines, um, Bitch Magazine is one of my favorite magazines um, and I like it also because it has lots of beautiful artwork and pictures. So this is a good one if you ever want to um, use it for collage. Um, but yeah, does anyone have any questions about that before I move on? Okay. And Lily, if I miss anything in the chat, please let me know because sometimes when I'm sharing my screen, it's a little bit more difficult to see. Um, so yeah, um, if you're just learning about zines, um, what is a zine, right? So, um, and some of you I think are already familiar with this, but I've just had these resources here and I, um, again, like I said, I'll make this available, but you know, zines are essentially, um, short for magazine, right? And it's a self-published, um, you know, book, pamphlet, magazine, um, foldable art gallery, if you will. And it comes in lots of different uh, forms. Some of them, as you can see in this picture, are a little bit more do-it-yourself or DIY, hand-drawn. Others are um, a little bit more professionally done because you can do them on publisher um, or in your computer and, and kind of use different software to make it um, look like a more, you know, professional published scene. Um, but it really can be anything that you want it to be. And that's one of the things I love about it um, is that there aren't any limits, just what you can put on the page, right? Um, does anyone have any questions about that? In a minute, I'll show you um, some examples, but I wanted to Kind of go through that. Um, so UT Austin um, actually has a really cool zine archive and collection and I actually think some of my zines might be in it from past zine festivals. Um, so if you want to later you can um, read up a little bit about the history of zines and kind of look through their archives and collection. Um, but Zines um, have a very long history. Um, most commonly known is that they began um, as fanzines, usually science fiction fanzines for um, authors like Heinlein and, um, and others in the 1930s. Um, but then they also, you know, span all the way into the um, 1980s punk era with the Riot Girl zines. Um, and, um, you know, have continued on into today and have also been used throughout various um, civil rights movements and, um, and other activist movements to, um, to share information about meetings and share, um, you know, information about um, 
you know, various social justice uh, organizing, right? So there's lots and lots of different uses for zines. Um, I've seen zines from, you know, ones that are like how to repair your bike um, all the way to some other ones such as, um, you know, information about um, migrant detention centers, right? So um, I actually have a box <laughs> full um, that I use when I'm teaching um, and I'll show you a couple of them, but um, this one I bought for like $2, I think, and it's uh, called the Palestine Solidarity Committee, um, if y'all can see that. So it's all informational and um, gives information about the Palestinian liberation movement. Um, this one I bought recently from a zine library slash store in um, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, I believe. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, it's Tucson, um, called Wasted Ink Zine Distribution. And this one is um, a zine about um, being gender fluid. Um, so, you know, I think that there's no end to what zines can be. Um, and then there are other zines, um, like I said, that I discovered. So this is a zine, um, Chiflada zine, that um, a friend of mine, Claudia Cardona, um, created that has um, both um, art submissions and poems and other um, work. And so it's actually a compilation of um, work from various uh, zinesters. And so it has like comics, um, and poems as well, and essays, right? Hopefully y'all can see that okay. Um, so just something to be thinking about that there are lots and lots of different forms for zines. We're gonna focus today on um, the mini zine and I'll show you that really quickly. So at my desk, which I'm afraid to show you my stack of books right now, but um, I actually have a little um, display for some of the mini zines that I've um, either made or purchased recently. Um, so for instance, this one, this little mini zine, so the mini zine is kind of, let's see, I guess it's like five by three um, or four by three. And this one is made by an artist um, whose uh, handle is Peachy Keen Press. And she actually publishes a zine that you can print each month. And this one was, uh, you know, what, what are the favorite things that you read? What are you listening to right now? And so it was actually almost like a little journal that you could fill out, which is very cute. And I, I don't know, I, I had a lot of fun filling that out. And then this other one that I purchased recently, um, I think for like $2, um, is um, Spooky and Unusual Plants. And so this person used this kind of textured um, paper and did a like informational dive on different types of um, kind of spooky plants. Um, so like the Venus flytrap, um, Chinese lantern and other uh, other kinds of plants. And so there's like a mixture of photo, there's a mixture of kind of informational writing. Um, and I thought that one was a lot of fun as well. So all of that is to say that most zines um, incorporate both kind of artwork or collage or visuals of some kind. If you're like me and you're not a super strong illustrator, I like to use um, you know, images that I can kind of get from a um, stock photo, you know, area online or using magazines. Um, and I like to use that as collage. And then usually they have some, you know, writing or some information that you want to share with others. Um, so that's just something to be thinking about when you're thinking about what kind of zines you might want to make in the future. All right, let me pause for any questions. That are coming up. For some reason, it's it's being real slow and not letting me see the chat. Um, Leah, is there anything? Any questions? No, no questions have come up. 
um, okay. through that that I'm seeing right now. Okay. Awesome. Um, well, here in a little bit, we're going to get into um, kind of the tutorial side of all this. Um, but since this particular workshop is um, about forms of self care um, and, and resilience and how we can access, um, you know, time for ourselves, time to create. And that's really what zine is all, zine making really is all about for me. Um, so these are just some things that I like about zine making. Um, oftentimes for me, it's a way to write vulnerably about something that I'm struggling with because I'm not, I'm not necessarily typing it. I'm not necessarily, um, I don't have to put it out there if I don't want to, and I can keep it if I want, but you know, there's just lots and lots of different options. Um, and um, so like, for instance, when I was um, struggling with a lot of my health issues, I worked on this one called Sick, um, which, you know, was just kind of a way for me to like start getting my, um, my feelings out about my health. Um, and so that's just, you know, something for me that I, um, it's always at a, at, at a, you know, within reach for me to be able to make a zine like that. Um, I like it also because it's a way to work with my hands and create something, again, without the pressure of doing anything with it. So, you know, if you were kind of revert back to when you used to like collage or draw more as a kid, it's one of those like art forms that, um, can be really unencumbered um, because, you know, ultimately it's just a piece of paper. It's pretty cost effective. So if you mess up, you can fix it or, you know, you can just start over again. Um, and, you know, if I do end up wanting to share a zine with others, um, I often make zines as gifts. Um, and so, you know, it's a way to share your feelings or your information or understanding with others. Um, you can make it, you can put it on a, you know, bookshelf somewhere, a little library shelf for someone to find. Um, you can, you know, it, it fits in your pocket. So you could just give it to someone who you feel like maybe needs a lift or um, needs a little uh, encouragement. For instance, um, I mentioned my friend Muddy Lease earlier. Um, they made me this for Christmas. It's a little mini zine. That's just all the things that they like about me which was so sweet. <laughs> so, um, and maybe you need to make one of those for yourself. Maybe you need a reminder about how awesome you are. So um, just something to be thinking about, I guess. Um, yeah, all right, well, let's get into, so I think we have uh, a good amount of time and I wanna have some time to create. Um, and for this, I'm gonna kind of go through this with you and then we're gonna do it together. So I'll turn off my screen share so that you can actually see me going through each step. Um, but we're going to practice folding the mini zine. This is just one form of folding, but it's the most common one. Um, and so as you can see in the diagram, you're going to fold your paper long ways, or as I like to say with the kids, hot dog style. Um, so you're gonna fold it in half, and then you're going to fold it end to end again, and then again, to the point where you have um, eight rectangles. And then we're going to fold it short ways or hamburger style. And we're going to use our scissors to cut a line just to this middle point here so that you have this slit in the middle. And then you're gonna fold it back over long ways and um, we're gonna push it together to make the fold. So let's do this together because this is always the part where folks kind of get tripped up. Um, and you don't have to turn your cameras on for this, but it might be helpful. And if we need to, we can, um, I can go through it myself and then we can maybe pause recording if you want to just be able to show uh, for folks that are, don't want to be recorded, we can always um, just go through it just so you can um, be shown or show like your paper and know that you did it right. So, so I'm going to take my piece of paper, right? And I'm going to fold it in half long ways. And you're going to try to match up the ends and get that crease really good and uh, creased. Um, I never do this right the first time. 
I always kind of mess it up. It's just in my nature. Okay, so it should look like this now. Now you're going to fold it end to end like that. Okay. And one little trick to get the crease really um, creased is sometimes you can use your scissors and you can kind of run it along the edge or you can also use a pen to do that and that kind of makes that that edge really creased. Um, okay, and then you're going to do the same thing. So right now this is what your paper looks like. I'm gonna do it again. And this is gonna be the final size of your zine, your mini zine. Um, so you're gonna get it really tight there. My nails are getting really long, so clearly I can use that to make the crease good. And then once you've done that, you're going to just unfold the whole thing. And you should have um, eight rectangles. Let me make my bigger. There you go. Um, and now this is the part where everyone kind of gets tripped up. So I just want to make sure you um, are seeing this. We are going to fold it now short ways or a hamburger style. So you should have four rectangles here. And we're gonna cut from here, just making sure you all can see this, to here. So I'll show you. So not all the way through the paper, just to about right here. And you'll know you did it right because you have, yeah, exactly. You have little legs that are kicking. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Right. Yeah. Are, is it on the folded side or, or the open side where you? Cut? Thank you for yes. It's on the folded side. Yes. Thank you. Um, I should have uh, I should have iterated that, and I did not. So thank you for asking. Yeah. So you're you're cutting along the folded edge. Um, so that when you open it up again, if you've seen Harry Potter, it's um, it's like a howler or it's like a little mouth, almost like a puppet. And then you're going to fold it again long ways. So you should have again these four squares. And what you're going to start to see is when you start to push them together, is it blowing your mind? Yes, it blows your mind, right? Okay, so you push it together like a little diamond and it's a book now. And then you get it all creased good and don't worry, like you can already see my edges are not perfect, like it's fine. It's work in progress, it's okay. If you know, maybe when you wanna publish or copy, photocopy your zine, then you can get really precious about, you know, how nice the edges are, but don't worry about it right now. It's okay. Um, all right. Um, Cece, did you, did you cut it along the other edge or I just wanna make sure. No, I'm good. I did, good. I asked before cutting. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> um, I mean, some folks are just like, they just wanna dive in. So, you know, it's okay. Um, if you want to do that too. Um, all right, so we have our mini zine now. Um, and let me know if anybody got stuck and it's okay if you did. Um, but I think um, what we can do is kind of talk about um, what you want to do now with your zine. Sorry, Silvana, go ahead. Yes, I got stuck on the, at the cutting. Okay. Before. So that's okay. Um, I cut it not from the fold in halfway. Okay. But it was not on the fold. It was on the open area. So I'm going to do another one. Okay. So this time I'm going to cut in all the way right from the fold. So from the fold to the middle point. So let me try. Oh, okay. That's right. To the middle point. Okay. Let me do it again. Okay. No worries. You can continue. Thank you. Yeah. No, you're good. But see how. See how this edge is folded? I just want you to be able to see it. And so you're just going to cut from here to here. Yeah. Right. Got it. Got it. All right. Awesome. Yeah. And that's the thing. If you mess up, it's okay. You can always reuse the paper for something else. 
Um, so let's let me reshare my screen and we're just going to talk through a few options and then I think maybe we can um, take a quick like stretch break just because I know I start to get antsy after a while. Um, and one thing I was going to say was um, just some like tips from me to you. When you're starting out, I think sometimes it, it helps to use like a blank sheet of copier paper. Um, just because like you may want to incorporate different colors in there that um, and like, you know, sometimes just the blank white sheet of paper can help with that. I have a, a bunch of colored paper at home, so I like to use the colors that speak to me the most. Um, purple is one of my favorite colors, so um, just something to think about. Um, and um, I would suggest also that when you're starting out, some folks get like really into like, oh, I want mine to look like a, a cover. So I'm going to use um, not cardboard. What am I thinking of? Cardstock. Um, but cardstock is a lot harder to fold. And so like even, even with this one, you can kind of see how like the edges are really difficult to get straight. And this one is a cardstock one. Um, so that's not to say that you should never use cardstock, but when you're starting out, you may want to kind of practice with other, with regular paper first. So um, same goes with kind of construction paper. So um, let's do this. So I'm here to give you just a few ideas and then we're going to take a little bit of time. So before you even start writing, maybe you've already dived in and started writing on your zine and that's okay too. Um, but I'm going to give you some tips to creating. Um, so here's some things that your zine can be about. Um, Self-care reminders or affirmations to yourself. So for instance, I made one at the beginning of the new year um, and I just put like some goals for myself. So some things I want to do in 2021 are be creative. Um, I hope my 2021 is abundant and full of love and learning, right? So those are just like, I'm a list maker. I like making lists. So that was just something that I made for myself. And summer is a good time to check in with yourself if you made goals this year that you're wanting to take stock of. Now's a good time. We're about halfway through the year, right? Um, maybe you want to draw a comic of a day in your life that you find meaningful um, or something that you just want to remind yourself of. You know, that's a lot of fun too. And it doesn't have to be, again, like you don't have to be this amazing illustrator to do that. Um, it can be a lot of fun, I think, to you know, um, to just do little silly drawings and, um, and see what comes of it. Um, maybe you want to write a poem or even create a visual poem. I think that's where I'm leaning for mine today. Um, I was reading um, the new book, uh, Yoke, um, by Jessamine Stanley, who is a yoga practitioner. Um, and it's a new book that she wrote um, kind of about her experience as a yoga, as a uh, black queer um, yoga practitioner in kind of the American yoga scene. Um, and one thing that she was talking about was kind of um, her process of learning how to unfold herself and take up space. And I, something about that word unfolding like kind of really sat with me and I was thinking of maybe using that word as a jumping off point for something. So I still don't really know what that's going to look like yet. But um, and then, you know, like I said, give a gift um, of a zine to someone who may need it. So like I've given gifts to my mom before when I felt like she needed to be reminded of things, you know, good things to do for herself. Um, you know, there's lots and lots of possibilities for how you can use zines. Um, maybe you're the type of person that wants to create something and immediately give it away. That's awesome too. Maybe you're someone who wants to kind of keep it as a reminder on your desk, you know, and maybe you look at it and it's a visual reminder for you to, you know, do something kind for yourself. So just something to be thinking about. Um, and I think, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing and give another kind of uh, 
let's see. I guess I'll give another um, bit of advice and then maybe we can um, take a break, but people can also be working during the break as well. So before you actually start um, your zine, because if you're a planner like me, it can be kind of intimidating when you're faced with these blank pages. Um, and so think about it this way. One of the reasons why the mini zine is also great kind of as a therapeutic tool um, is that it's really low stakes because there's only four pages, right? So, um, so you have a little cover, right? Um, so thinking about what you might want to design for your cover, what your title of your zine is going to be, um, and then you have a little back cover, right? So maybe that's where you share like your social media handle or your, um, you know, some information about yourself, or maybe you have a blog that you want people to visit or, you know, what have you, or maybe you just want to draw something cute at the back and, um, or do an about the author page. Um, lots of possibilities there. And then, um, you know, so you have the space to use each page individually but you also have kind of that um, middle page as well. Um, and so you could do like a drawing or a panel that spans the whole page. Um, and actually I did a zine making workshop for Leah's class uh, a while ago. Let me see if I can find the one that um, they did, this one group did a zine um, about empowerment. Let me see if I can find it. I think it's this one. And they used kind of the whole middle panel and then they, um, when you opened it up, it opened into this like kind of cool illustration slash um, you know, word usage, right? And so it doesn't, it can be really simple like that, but think about how you want to use the space for your zine. Um, because that can also be, you know, a way that you um, create something different. You could also create something that unfolds and becomes like a full page panel if you wanted to. Um, so lots of possibilities there. And so what I would suggest you do is before you start putting anything in here, I would take maybe a separate sheet of notebook paper and just, you know, number out, okay, here's my cover, here's my first page, here's my second page, etc. And just start kind of sketching out what you want each piece to look like. Um, and I think that's going to probably help you to decide, you know, what you want each part to look like. Um, you know, what do you want each page to feature? Um, do you want to leave some room for some collaging or some illustration? Um, how do you want the um, words to kind of be oriented on the page, right? So those are just some tips um, when you're first starting out. But again, like there's no pressure. Um, maybe you make something that you like, but you're not really like into sharing it with other people. That's totally fine. Maybe you make something you like, but then you decide you want to redo it, but now you have an idea of what you're going to do. Um, and so that's just something to be thinking about when you're, um, when you're planning and creating. So, um, Lilia, do we want to maybe um, take like a six, seven minute break just to like move around, get water, and folks can be kind of working and planning um, during that time? Sure, that's a great idea. Do you okay. want me to go ahead and suspend the recording or sure. in that interval? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and I'm then gonna we can come back and check in and kind of see um, where we are. And, um, and then I figure what we'll do is we'll take about 20, 30 minutes to actually create and I'll put on some music and, and we can check in with one another. And then towards the end, we'll um, have some time to share if folks want to. And then um, I'll share some additional resources um, and how you can share your scenes if you want to. Awesome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording and folks can do what they need to do. Okay, yeah, so let's come back together at the <laughs> um, And um, so that way you can have access to links, but um, I just wanted to go over. Can y'all see my screen? The slides? Okay, cool. Um, 
So I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, and it is in English and Spanish just because I've, I've taught this workshop with um, folks in both. So um, if you know any family members or anybody who also speaks Spanish um, and want to, uh, obviously my, this is Mexican Americans, <laughs> Tejano Spanish. So forgive me if there are any uh, mistranslations, but um, just uh, something else if you want to share it with anybody who um, only speaks Spanish or reads Spanish, that's um, totally fine. But yeah, um, I just included this other link here. Um, it's a, another kind of uh, link about how to make a zine or a paper book. Um, and these are just some other you know, ideas for what you could do with your zine. Um, one thing that is cool about the mini zines is that um, once you've kind of created it, if you wanted to share it with other people, um, it's really easy to photocopy because you can just unfold it and all the pages are already kind of, you know, out there for you. So you would, you know, put it on the copier, make as many copies as you wanted, and then you would just fold it and cut it the exact same way that you did the first time. And so that's one thing that I like about the mini zine is it makes it a little bit easier to copy and distribute versus the full page kind of um, half pager is what we call regular zines um, that kind of have a little bit more um, complications to it when it comes to printing and copying. Um, so these are just some other topics. Um, you can make a how-to um, and it could be anything how to, um, you know, how to, so maybe you have a skill that you want to share with other people. But um, I know that uh, there were a lot of zines I saw. Um, people called them kind of hashtag quarantine zines. Um, so during the pandemic, people were doing like how to wear your mask properly, um, you know, zines about how to wash your hands properly, like what kind of hand sanitizers to use, what kind of masks were appropriate. So like, informational ones like that, but it can also be more whimsical, like how to enjoy, you know, a day in the sun or like, I don't know, something cute like that, that maybe you want to share with other people. Um, and I, I hope that when people, when I say cute, I, I mean also just like nice and cool. I don't, don't mean to like um, deride the word by using the word cute, but, um, and then of course, community issues. So um, Nicole and, and Kao both kind of talked about that as, um, you know, part of their zines. Um, and then um, one that I also really like that I wish I saw more of, um, and actually I might, forgive me, I'm going to grab it really quickly. Uh, if I can find it wherever it is lying. Um, Here's an example of one. If you, like me, watched the show Daria um, way back when in the 90s, um, fanzines are a lot of fun. So if you have, um, like I know Street Fighter was referenced. Um, if you uh, have a particular show or movie or video game or comic that you really like, you can make a fanzine that's kind of like an appreciation zine. Um, so just an idea there. Um, and then these are just some places where you can find zines. There is a, um, off, a Lone Star Zine Festival that was, uh, that did happen virtually this past year. Um, I imagine that next spring, next March, it will probably happen again, maybe in person. It seems like that's probably going to be a possibility. Um, and so I have some links here. And then there's also a San Antonio Zine Festival. And I highly encourage y'all now that the local Austin library, the central library is open again, which is I think where Frida is. Um, they have um, zines in English and Spanish as well and in other languages I believe um, available to take a look at. And I know that there's zine festivals all over the country. There's one in Philly, there's one in um, Orange County that I've been to, they're all over. So. Um, if you're not in Austin, take a look at ones in your area. And yeah, I also just have a little page about me. So if you want to learn more about my work, um, here are some links to Barrio Writers and Austin Backcave, two organizations that I work for and with. 
Um, and then I also have my website if you want to read more of my work or learn about other workshops that I teach. Um, I have a book coming out this fall and um, hopefully we'll have more details about that at some point soon. So I think that's it for me and I wanna be respectful of everyone's time. Um, <laughs> yeah, the transcript is messed up. I really am not a fan, um, but yeah. Um, I appreciate y'all spending some time with me on your Saturday. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, um, like I said, we'll be following up via email with these resources. Um, I'll also just put my email here um, in case you have any questions or want to reach out to me about anything. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I hope you keep reading, keep creating, keep you know doing all the wonderful work that you're doing and hope to see you again in the future thank you everybody thank you for like i said spending the saturday with us um hopefully whatever you all have planned it involves pets plants and people or any combination thereof and um we went ahead i went ahead and put our website so if you want to follow what we do in social media and other outlets that's cool too and yeah gracias Adiós. Um...